Hey, welcome back to the top as we check out this year's most talk about region, Sinnoh. Back a few months ago, we went over the 10 best Pokemon for your team for Sinnoh, but alas, that was for Diamond and Pearl. Those games were notorious for missing a lot of Pokemon, mainly fire types, but that makes sense, since they don't want Sinnoh to burn down with its many forests. Joking aside, it also included many other new Pokemon, such as the new evolutions to older generations Pokemon, like Gallade or Electivire, so there's a lot more to look at here and break down. As always, we're scoring each Pokemon on a scale of negative 3 to 3 on the most important matchups throughout the game, so it should be an interesting time to see the changes that are most likely going to be available in the remakes. Though remember that this is based off of Platinum, so Fairy type isn't being taken into account, but we're wasting daylight. Let's dive into the best Pokemon for the best main series game, Pokemon Platinum. What? It's just an opinion. Jeez. Kicking things off is the seventh best Pokemon from Diamond and Pearl. That'd be Medicham. Medicham slips a bit to 10th, but it's still the best fighting type in the game to use. It's found on the same spot as before, east of Eternus City, but the changes in Platinum send it tumbling down the board. As you can see how this system works before, Green equals good, red equals bad, yellow equals neutral, and black equals not available at the time of battle. Anyway, Fantina is the only gym leader it struggles with, but it turns around against Maylene, Byron, and Candace, and then goes even with the rest. Against Barry, it actually doesn't have that big of an issue against him. Really, it only struggles against his Star Raptor while handling his Roserade, Heracross, and Snorlax, and if he didn't pick Torterra, his starter. It does decent against Team Galactic, since they love shoving Zubats in our face like it's... Like, like, the 11th Zubat will be any better? It has the easiest time against everyone except for Jupiter, since he does have a dark type in Skuntank, which, in reality, is neutral, but still, you'd want a ground type instead. For the Elite Four, it really goes neutral against the entire league, even Cynthia, as it's only good against her Lucario and Roserade. It's the best fighting type in the game in terms of matchups, but that won't stop me from always using Gallade instead, because you don't just say no to your favorite Pokémon. Coming off the heels of Medicham was the same Pokemon that came after it last time, Bronzong. Bronzong remains in the top 10 due to its resistances, and Team Galactic boosting its score to astronomical levels. The difference between Diamond and Pearl with Platinum is that you can catch it earlier before taking on Gardenia, which is a great help against her, since Bronzor resists Grass type and hits Roserade super effectively. Then it runs through the rest of the game as it doesn't really have any disadvantages against any gym leaders while taking out Mylene and Candace. Against Barry, Bronzong only has issues with his Rabidash slash Infernape, but only if you don't have Heatproof as its ability. It either resists or has the edge against the rest of his team, namely Roserade and Heracross, but be aware if you don't have Levitate. His Snorlax does have Earthquake. And like I mentioned before, Bronzong's score against Team Galactic is otherworldly since it doesn't have any issues outside of Cyrus's Houndoom. And lucky for you, not every member of the Elite Four have Earthquake akin to Diamond and Pearl, so Bronzong will have a bit better time in the Pokemon League. Other than Bertha, who was a problem before with the wrong ability, but now you have to deal with Flint as well since he actually has fire types. So, one or the other, pick your poison, you're either weak against Flint or Bertha, but Levitate is far better in my opinion. We finally get our first new Pokemon when looking back at Diamond and Pearl's list. What's that? It's only been three Pokemon. So what? I like variety. And if this video was the same Pokemon as the other Sinnoh video, it would have been seen as clickbait. I don't like to deceive people like that. Anyway, before the National Dex, you can speak to Bebe, or however you say her name, to pick up Eevee. And out of all the Eevee Lucians, try to guess the best one. Well, if under your breath now you just said Leafeon, well, you're wrong. Grass types are terrible in Sinnoh. Actually, it's Jolteon. What's great is all of its weaknesses are already gone by the time you get Eevee, so Jolteon doesn't have much disadvantages with any gym leader. On the same coin, it doesn't have any advantages outside of Crash or Wake. Barry's team is pretty split, as it can deal with a Star Raptor and Float Soul Slash Empoleon. Honestly, if Team Galactics would stop spamming Zubats, Electro-types wouldn't feast on them so hard. Jolteon electrocutes all of them, other than for Saturn, who's the only one without a flying type. Even Cyrus has three Pokemon a week to Jolteon. But that's where the fun and games end, as Jolteon goes back to being on the sideline. No real advantage to speak in the Pokemon League, rather a troubling battle against Bertha. So Electric is a great mid-game type, but the end game, bench it, as you don't want it to only get you five points for your fantasy team. 
So why did Metacham and Bronzong fall, only for Rabidash to gain in the standing? Well, that's a good question. The answer is that Platinum came in to save the day. Ponyta is now available in the wild grass accessible via Orberg City before the first gym. But don't actually use it there, because it's a huge liability as well against Crasher Wake, but that was obvious. Gardenia, Byron, and Candice, on the other hand, get burned, welded, and melted up respectively against Rabidash. Pinch buried, nothing jumps off the board outside of Roserade and Heracross. That rings true with Team Galactic as well, as the fire type is pretty neutral other than the random bronze ores the admins have, as well as Cyrus's Weavile. But the Pokemon League, on the other hand, is a different story. It starts off great against Eren, before the flames burn out against Bertha. And then after that, you'd probably find a better matchup against Flint and Lucian. And it's the same against Cynthia, Outsider, Roserade, and Lucario. The other four, you'd be better off trying to find something different. But think of it this way. Earlier access makes Rabidash that much better, especially with more fire types to pick from. This is the only new evolution from prior generations that makes its way onto the list. Gliscor is available by catching a Gligar as it most likely replaced Bronzor on Route 206, but after finding the Razor Fang on Route 214, south of Veilstone City, you'll finally evolve it. With only two bad matchups, Gliscor is just that good. Ground and Flying is a great type combo, as Gliscor would only have troubles against Crasher Wake and Candice. It would completely run over Maylene, Byron, and Volkner. Against Barry, Gliscor drops him too, only running into Floatzel, but if he picked Piplup, a ground move against would be a risky click, but effective one. But outside of the water type matchup, Gliscor has a great matchup against the rest of his team. It all backfires against Team Galactic, though. All of the Zubats and Levitating Bronzors take away Gliscor's best attribute, the ground type. While facing Saturn and Jupiter would be a good idea in theory due to their aces, it's not really the crutch to rely on, and especially keep it away from Cyrus. It's no bueno there. But it all returns for the Elite Four, strong against Eren and Flint, while resisting Bertha, bar her wish cash, and a wavering matchup against Cynthia, which it's strong against Roserade and Lucario while doing neutral or worse against their other four. It's definitely a solid ground type pick. Spiritomb is back! Unfortunately dropping two spots to number five, but the point still remains. One, you have to talk to 32 people underground still, have to actually have 32 people to talk to underground, and then find it in the odd keystone structure south of Solacy on town. The resistances and immunities tend to carry Spiritomb here. Maylene is the only one to completely struggle against it, while Spiritomb's only disadvantage is at the hands of Byron, but only by resistances. If you don't remember, the fairy type is not in the game yet, so Spiritomb doesn't have a weakness yet. Barry struggles due to the fact that Heracross and Snorlax can't hit their stab attacks very well. The same can be said against Team Galactic, since their poison type attacks don't dent Spiritomb at all. Speaking of resistances, the ultimate resistance is the fact that Lucian Psychic types can't even touch Spiritomb. But that's about it. It's not really going to give you an offensive advantage, but if you're ever in a pinch, a Pokemon without a weakness is a great option for your team. It's not a surprise that there are a lot of the same pairs together again. Platinum isn't completely different, but different enough to warrant a new video. Because of that, certain types of scores aren't changing because their matchups are unaffected. Take Spiritomb. Most of its matchups were unaffected since its Ghost Dark weaknesses and strengths were unaffected. That goes for Drifblim as well. Both of these Pokemon were number 3 and number 2 respectively, but take a hit this time around due to the shifting standings. But it's still found on the same spot, outside of Valley Windworks on Friday. And because its main matchups still remain unchanged, it retains the same results as it did before. Strengths against Gardenia, Maylene, and Fantina, well, Fantina can also be a weakness, its true weaknesses remain against the other half of the game, Byron, Candice, and Volkner. Having no bad matchups against Barry is where it excels. Going against Roserade and Heracross is a breeze. In fact, you could probably solo Barry if you wanted to. Team Galactic suffers from Drifblim as well, except you want to keep it away from Cyrus, otherwise you'll hear all the humanity. The same is said for the Elite Four. Eren and Lucian don't want anything to do with it, while Bertha is a bit risky as some of her Pokemon carry rock coverage. Going even against every member of Cynthia's team is great, except for the fact that she has a Spiritomb, which we about to play no games there. But just like before, Drifblim reigns supreme as the best ghost type in the... It, it's not? Well, it's the best flying type of the game. It, it's, it's not either. Well then, this is awkward. 
Speaking of pairs, this next pair leapfrogs over the two ghost types. It's the two water types. Starting with the former Hoenn champion, Palipper jumping from number 5 to number 3. This water duo left a mark on the platinum landscape. But how? Palipper is available much later in the game, being caught before the battle versus Crasher Wake instead of being before Gardenia's battle. That's two good matchups it misses, Gardenia and Maylene. Well, don't get me wrong, its score is much lower, as now it doesn't do well against any gym leaders, but it blows Barry out of the water. Outside of his Star Raptor, Floatzel, Slash Empoleon, and Snorlax, it leaves a mark on everyone else. The changes to Team Galactic slightly hurt Pelipper, but the restoring factor is the fact that Flint actually has fire types this time. That's an extra three great matchups on top of dealing with Bertha and Cynthia, which in that battle goes even against all her Pokemon there too. Really, Cynthia should have just picked up an electric type instead of keeping the grass type. I learned that the hard way that the grass type doesn't completely counter water types, as it might as well be pseudo ice too. The second half of the pairing is Gyarados, and this thing has been all over these lists in nearly every generation. Its power knows no bounds. It's roughly the same story as it is with Pelipper, albeit Gyarados actually gets the good matchups early on against Maylene among others. Knowing that, Gyarados empowers its will against every other gym leader. Oh f I forgot about you, Volkner. Seriously, every f***ing video I gotta deal with Gyarados breaking its legs for f sake. But again, it's the same story that I might as well just use the same slice for Gyarados too that I used for Pelipper. If it wasn't for the fact that the flying type is tacked onto it for some reason. It doesn't do much since it doesn't have access to many flying type moves, so it's less effective against Barry. Team Galactic remains roughly the same as it's not really a game changer there. However, the Elite Four takes it for a ride as it ends up in the same situation as Pelipper, other than against Cynthia where it lacks said flying type moves to truly be effective. But as it's available earlier in the game and gets new moves every three levels, you can't go wrong with the best water type in the game. Before we reach the pinnacle of Platinum, it's time to check out the honorable mentions. Garchomp. Because if I don't mention it, I know the storm that will follow in the comments section. The dragon type doesn't do it many favors, and the ground type isn't all that great against the important matchups. I'm not saying don't use it, or at least try to go for it, but that's just picking favorites at that point. Star Raptor. Falling from its grace is Star Raptor. It's a highly competitive list, but the new additions to the Pokedex just bump it on the outside looking in. Houndoom. Probably one of the better fire types in the game, but due to the fact that it's available after its better matchups, it's the biggest hindrance. Empoleon. Still remains the best starter of the Sinnoh Trio. It doesn't mean you should pick it since there are better water options, but I just wanted to mention this fact again. Giratina. Being one of only four legendary Pokemon available before reaching the Pokemon League doesn't leave a lot of competition for the best legendary for your team. It doesn't help that the other three legendaries are the Lake Trio as well. Dustox. Still remains the worst Pokemon you could choose for your team. Do yourself a favor and don't even bother. Unless you're a masochist, which I fully recommend doing a Platinum Dustox solo run. But with that, we have to crown a new champion for Sinnoh. Who's it gonna be? Before we dive into that, let me know who you think it is by commenting your guess in the comments with a caption, Yeezy taught me. So I know that you made it this far. How do I know that you made it this far? Yeezy taught me. Surprise, surprise. A Pokemon you think would be available in Diamond and Pearl is finally available in Platinum to use. And boy, does it cripple a lot of the game. And boy, does it cripple a lot of the community as well, because people couldn't shut up about it if it was a legendary or not. You should know the best Pokemon for your Sinnoh team in Platinum is none other than Rotom, since once you get cut, it will actually be available pre-national decks. And I'm not kidding when I say it asserts its dominance throughout the entire game. It combines the defensive capabilities of Spiritomb while having the offensive power of Jolteon. Let's break it down. Fantina is the only gym leader it may have trouble against since it's a ghost type, but it can fire back with ghost moves of its own. Maylene, Byron, and Volkner are all resisted by Rotom, while Crasher Wake is basically electrocuted. Rotom completely obliterates Barry's team with its worst matchups against Rabidash and Roserade, but those are neutral anyway. You could say that Team Galactic is its only true weakness as they carry dark types, but with the Zubats, they outweigh the darkness, and it still has a great time against them regardless. And with the Elite Four, it's no different. 
Aaron, Lucian, and Cynthia all fall to Rotom's might, though don't play around against Garchomp. And especially avoid Spiritomb. And Bertha isn't a worry since Rotom's ground weakness is an afterthought because of its ability Levitate, protecting it against any ground type move. Disclaimer though, as her Hippowdon does carry Crunch. And after all of that, something new that Platinum added was the Rotom Appliance forms where you can gain a new move to cover any weakness that may come your way. But be aware that in Platinum, its type didn't change just yet, but the coverage is very useful to patch any holes, if there are any. Whew, that took even longer to cover than the last. I hope you enjoyed our time covering Sinnoh. Who knows what changes have to be made to this list when Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl come out, as with the addition of the Fairy type or any team changes may change the list, but most likely not by much. We'll have to see when the time comes. But as for this video, it's reached its end. But we still have a insert distortion world pun here to sign off here. If you did enjoy and want to see more from this channel, like the video and subscribe to start the climb today. But hey, I'll catch you next time at the top because you know that's how we do it.